And you know, on the show, we've been talking about new ways to cover food. After all, it's something many of us talk about often. So we asked one of our correspondents at the NPR food blog, The Salt, to come by and surprise us with a story. And I swear, at this moment here, I had no idea what was about to happen. Hello. Alison Aubrey. I come bearing gifts. You come bearing something come looking bearing like a gifts. dessert. A chocolate cake made it this morning. Really? Yeah. For me? Um, yeah, sort of. Okay, well, that's yeah, this is generous. really going to help tell our story here. Okay. So, you know, it's sort of the January doldrums, yeah, right? Yeah, I'm feeling um, them. It's that time when New Year's resolutions might sort of fade away, but a lot of people are still trying to lose weight, get in shape. So I'm going to ask you a personal question, David. Anything. Um, would you put yourself into this category? I've been in that category for about the past <laughs> year or longer or maybe my whole okay. life. So, yes. Okay. So one of the latest strategies for weight loss. Is chocolate cake. No, is actually getting <laughs> paid to lose weight. How much are we talking about? Well, here, I am going to get out my checkbook here. I'm going to write you a check. This is, let me, I don't want to distract you from this process. Okay, Go so ahead. this is $1,500 to David Green, but you don't get it yet. That's cruel. <laughs> and you, do you want to know what you'd have to do? I, I, yes. Well, to find out, I want to introduce you to this guy. Okay. Um, he's a school teacher in Indiana. His name is Ben Carnes. He's in his early 30s. He was a lacrosse and football player. But then his weight started to really creep up to more than 350 pounds. Mm. And he had tried almost every diet he'd heard of. Now, he was really starting to get worried. Doctors had already put him on Lots of medicines that were related to his weight and to diet. Cholesterol medicine and high blood pressure medicine. I had a high liver count. I had pretty much everything that they measured in my blood work was bad. And here I was taking three prescription drugs at age 30. Hmm. At 30 years old, he's really struggling. That's right. He was feeling really desperate. Uh, so one day he was, you know, Googling around, doing an internet search for weight loss programs, and he came across something called Healthy Wager, and he signed up. So here's how it works. Ben starts putting 50 bucks down a month on a bet that if he loses a certain amount of weight over a year, that he'd get a big payout. But if he doesn't meet this goal weight, he's out. All the money. $600. So basically, we have a gamble here. He's betting on his own success, and he said that that really appealed to him. Well, I, I knew that if I put money on the line, that it was kind of a double motivating thing. It was, one, I didn't want to lose the money I was putting in, but two, um, my wife and I agreed that if I won, I got to spend it on anything I wanted. So, you know, kind of both of those played into it. So this really, this really worked for him? <laughs> this really worked. Uh, in his first wager, he lost about 40 pounds. Since then, he's lost about 60 more. Oh my God. Yeah, a total of 100 pounds. So, yes, in the end, he did end up getting this $1,500 check. But it was not easy. At one point, he told me about midway through, his weight had plateaued. He wasn't anywhere near his goal weight. And he was really, really frustrated. My wife actually at one point called me out. You know, I was feeling sorry for myself. I hadn't lost any weight for like a three or four week span. And I was like, this is stupid. It's a waste of time. I'm not going to meet my goal. And I'm going to go have a burger and some fries. Mm -hmm. And she kind of she kind of yelled at me and said, we're paying way too much money for you to just bail on this now. That's the thing about diets. I mean, I mean, one thing is you sometimes do plateau and you start to get frustrated. And frustration, not seeing the results change, can lead you to just say, forget it. It's not worth it. I'm going to have a burger. I mean, that's really the, the struggle with it. That's right. And I think what's interesting here is losing that money was the thing that freaked him out. I mean, And his it, wife. <laughs> right, and his wife, right. Now, it would be nice to think that willpower is enough, right? But it's not. I mean, I've got this cake sitting here that I just told you about. Uh -huh. I mean, look at this. My daughter on the way out this morning took her finger and just ran a big smudge through it. She's like, why are you holding out on me, mom? That's adorable. It just shows the sort of temptation, right? So I think when it comes to resistance, a lot of people just need more strategies. And that's what Ben's story really shows, that in the end, the big motivator for him was not the prize money. It was what he heard from his wife, that fear of losing the money. And it really turns out that Ben's story is not so unique. Scientists who study financial incentives for uh, behavior change or weight loss say most of us operate this way without really ever knowing it. We're highly risk averse. I spoke to this one researcher, Mitesh Patel, the University of Pennsylvania, and he put it this way, that the fear of loss can be more powerful than the reward of winning. 
And so if you have some skin in the game, that really uh, tends to drive behavior change and people tend to not want to lose something they feel like they already have. But, you know, I have to say, as compelling as this is, a lot of workplaces are having these kind of weight loss challenges and they don't always work. For instance, there was a study published just this month in the journal Health Affairs, and it looked at this workplace wellness program where they basically discounted people's health insurance premiums if they lost weight. And it was not successful at all because the payoff isn't significant enough. I mean, who's going to notice at the end of three or four months that you had a few more dollars in your pay stuff? Some people might notice, but it's not the same as thinking about $1,500. You could literally hold your hands and go buy exactly. something. Exactly. Really the immediacy of that, right? So the more successful formula here seems to be this blending of skin in the game, the mm-hmm. sort of wager approach, with plenty of social support. What, what what would skeptics say? I mean, among other things, I could imagine you might have someone who just doesn't have $50 to, to put up. I mean, the budget is that tight. Sure. Are there other reasons that, that skeptics say, come on, this is just not the best sure. idea? Sure. I mean, I can think of two right off the bat. Um, if someone needs to lose a huge amount of weight, they might need more oversight and they might need a lot more instruction about what they should be eating, how they should be exercising. Another thing to think about is how well will someone like Ben be able to keep it off? What is it about this wagering approach that might help someone keep it off in the long term? And that we don't really know. And that check, I guess, is not going to fall into my hands. Well, you know, um, I've got it here. So you want to work towards this fifteen hundred dollars? I, I do. Or <laughs> you know, here I can slice up a little sliver of cake for you. Could, could you I like? have that and still succeed in getting the fifteen hundred dollars? Is know, that possible? I think it is possible. It is not mutually exclusive. You could, in theory, eat a very tiny sliver here and cut back on portions overall and still achieve your weight loss goal. I like that. <laughs> okay, here you go. Allison Aubrey, I'm so happy you stopped by. Really interesting stuff. <laughs> Thanks, David conversation with NPR's Allison Aubrey that began with a chocolate cake and a checkbook.